Hey YouTube! Yes, I'm still live and back with something completely different than last time. If you produce music, you may be familiar with a program called Reason. Maybe you're even a Reason user yourself, and if you are, you're most likely familiar with Rack Extensions. To explain it briefly, it's essentially a plugin format like VST or AU, but optimized for use within Reason. Since Reason is a bit of an unconventional DAW with its rack, rack extensions can offer a lot of possibilities. You could, for example, use an LFO rack device to control something on two completely different synthesizers, such as the pitch. Maybe throw in a CV delay to slightly offset the signal on one of the synths, and you have some neat modulation for layered sounds. Although as nice as all of this is, I can't help but wonder what some of these devices are meant to be used for. I mean, LFOs and envelopes and such are pretty straightforward, but there's a lot more. So I decided to go look through absolutely everything that's on the shop right now and get the free stuff. And I mean all of it. I ended up also throwing in a device called Truth, which is... a CV logic gate. Yes, logic gate. As in NAND, OR, XOR, AND, NOT, and all that stuff. I have no idea what it could possibly be used for a music production, but it was only 9 euros and I felt like playing around with it. Anyways, I think I've got most of the free stuff I didn't already have in my card. So... Uh, I guess they never expected anyone to put this much stuff in their shopping cart. Whatever, let's just check out. Oh. Well, I guess that really is too much. Alright, time to remove some of it. So, let's just remove that. Yeah, that takes a while. I think I removed like 10 devices. Let's hope it works now. Nah, shit. Alright, time to remove some more stuff. Okay, here we go. Alright, finally. So now that I've got all of that, it's time to move the items from my um, temporary shopping cart to the actual one. Okay, done. Now let's check out. Wait, where's the buy button? Ah, oh, come on, are you really doing this to me? Oh, there it is. All right, PayPal and continue. Uh, continue! God damn. Let's try refreshing. Oh, uh, guess I have them now. That sure took a while. Let's actually get to using some of the really weird stuff. So, here's the logic gate. Now, what could I do with this thing? Hmm. I could build a CPU. Okay, maybe that's a little too ambitious. Let's do a calculator instead. So, what are we gonna need for a calculator? Well, some sort of input would be nice. I don't think anyone actually made any analog to digital converter or binary encoder rack extension, so... I think we'll have to go for a set of buttons. The best thing I had for that purpose was a plugin called Mod Panel 8, which has a row of 8 toggle switches. We can use those as an 8-bit input. Okay. Maybe I should give a brief explanation of the binary system before I move on. Instead of digits going from 0 to 9, they go from 0 to 1. Every digit has a value. The first one has the value 1, the second one the value 2, the third one the value 4, and so on. What do I mean by that? Well, the value of the next digit will always be double the value of the last one. Converting a binary number to a decimal number is actually fairly simple. If the digit is 1, you add its value to the total. If it's 0, you don't. So for example, the binary number 0101 equals the decimal number 5, because 4 plus 1 equals 5. Now that that's out of the way, let's actually build a calculator. Since some sort of output would be kind of neat as well, I'm gonna use this device called RVL1, which lets you monitor 8 different CV signals and represent them as a value between 0 and 1. If I connect the switch on the mod panel 8 directly to it and activate the switch, the value on the output changes to 1. At least if you disable hold outs on the mod panel 8 beforehand. I'll just rename all of this stuff to actually make sense and now you can see which digit has which value. And that effectively gives us an 8-bit input and output. How do I make it calculate though, you may ask? Well, that's where the logic gates come in. I don't actually know how to do it yet, but I know that I need something called a full adder, and I know it can be built by using logic gates. I'm sure Google can help me here. And sure enough, here's something. 
That looks fairly straightforward. I can actually build a full adder using a single instance of truth, since it needs exactly five logic gates. So, while I play this time lapse of me building a bunch of full adders and putting them together, let me just explain how these things even work. Let's have a look at that diagram I found on my Google search, since all I'm doing here is wiring up these gates according to that diagram. You can see that you have three inputs and two outputs. The inputs A and B are your regular inputs for addition. If you add 1 plus 0, the sum output will be 1, and 0 plus 0 will result in 0. However, if you add 1 plus 1, the sum output will also be 0. And that's where the carry input and output come in. In this case, the 1 will appear on the carry output, which will connect to another full adder's carry input. If all three inputs are 1, both outputs will be 1 as well. Why? Well, since 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 3. And if you recall how the binary system works, you'll know that 1 1 in binary equals 3 in decimal. Anyways, that should pretty much cover full adders, so let's try to actually calculate something with this contraption I just built. I'm gonna go with something simple. Let's calculate 10 plus 10. So, first of all, we will need to represent the number 10 in binary, which is 1010. So I'll set both inputs to that. Now, let's release the hold button and see what the output says. Since I labeled it, I can just calculate 16 plus 4, and that will give me the result, which is in fact 20. So the calculation worked. Let's try some bigger numbers now. How about 72 plus 56? That results in 128, which is... let's just check here... yes, that is correct. And if I change to 74 plus 58, for example, the output updates accordingly to display 132. Pretty neat, right? Okay, I admit, if this is your first time hearing of the binary system, you're probably thinking that this is the worst calculator you've ever seen. And you wouldn't be wrong about that. Having to do calculations to read the result of your calculator kind of defeats the point of a calculator, and with it only doing addition with numbers up to 255, it's not exactly versatile either. But that really wasn't the point of this to begin with. This is actually a fairly accurate representation of how addition is done on a CPU like you would find in a PC or even a phone or tablet. So I actually did build part of a CPU, and this could definitely be extended into being an actual CPU. It would just take a lot of time that I really don't have. I will however leave a link in the description for you to download the reason file if you want to do something with it. Realistically speaking though, I wouldn't really recommend anyone to build an actual CPU in reason. If you want to mess with logic gates and learn about the inner workings of microprocessors, I would suggest you look at a free software called Logisim. The main advantage is that it's actually designed for logic circuit simulation instead of music production. Really, this entire video was more just to poke fun at some of these rack extensions because I really couldn't think of any way to use these musically. Maybe someone who's more experienced with modular synthesis than I am can figure it out, but hey. If you want to build a CPU out of logic gates, Reason has a rack for that. Anyways, I think that about does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe learned something from it. Maybe I'll do another video someday. But until then, bye!